This summer we've seen a lot of yellow flashing crops. Why is it happening? <laughs> you know, we get a lot of questions like that. Whenever there's something unusual out in the field, and when you have soybeans that look yellow and the rest of the field is green, well, that's going to stand out. Yeah, and but it's not just soybeans. I mean, we've seen it this year in corn, we've seen it in wheat, we see it in a number of different crops. Uh, so again, I mean, why does it happen? Well, you know, when plants have some sort of stress that they just can't handle, it's all happening at the same time, a lot of times they'll respond by going into a state of shock and all of a sudden this soybean plant that has, in many cases, an overabundance of Roundup. You know, you've overlapped, uh, you've you've crossed your path twice, you know, where you're on an yeah, end Yeah, wait, Darren, spray. isn't Roundup, aren't Roundup pretty soybeans? Can't you apply whatever you want for Roundup out there? Yeah, they can handle Roundup on them, but if you look at the Roundup label, there's only so much Roundup you can put on at one shot. And here's one of the reasons why. The plant, it takes some time for it to work through that Roundup. And what plants actually do, what soybean plants do, is they don't actually metabolize the Roundup, they compartmentalize it. So they take in that Roundup and it takes them just a little bit of time to grab that Roundup, push it down into the roots and kind of get it away from the growing tissue so the plant can get back to doing its job of photosynthesis. Now when you've got an overload of Roundup, like in an overlap kind of situation, you know, this isn't something where the whole field turns yellow. It's, you see one line and maybe it's a couple feet wide that, ah, oh, I didn't get the sprayer shut off quick enough or, or, oh, I miscounted the rows and I overlapped by a row. And you've got a, just a small area that gets really overloaded. Well, those plants have a tough time. But the thing is, it's not just Roundup overload. It could be anything. So we've seen a lot of people applying fungicide this year, and that's great. You're probably going to do an excellent job of reducing disease issues in your crop. The problem becomes when you want to combine that fungicide together with Roundup, together with fertilizer and all of a sudden oh all of a sudden you become an, in an overload situation. Now a lot of times the yellow flash that you're going to see typically out in crops whether it's corn, soybeans or wheat, it only lasts for a few days, doesn't really seem to hurt yield much, but you've stressed that plant. So that's not well, a real good thing. Wait a second, wait a second. Doesn't seem to hurt yield much. How do you know that? Like take for example an yield overlap monitor. type situation We've had the exact where you've same got thing one or farm. two rows that are overlapped and turn yep. yellow. Well, you aren't going to combine one or two rows. That's going to get lumped in with the other six or eight or 12 rows that your combine's picking up. And you're not even going to notice a difference because, well, you know, it was one row out of 12, for example, uh, on our combine. You aren't going to notice yep, that. But even so, it should show up on the yield monitor if it was anything significant. Oh, so all boy. I'm getting you're at You're going to have is... to kill one row, Brian, for it to show up on a yield no, monitor you when you're not. harvesting 12. Yeah, but again, on our farm, we've had it where it's been a lot more than one row. So yes, if it's going to take several weeks, uh, you know, where you still have yellow, then you've definitely got an issue. So you have to be careful what you're mixing and make sure you're talking to your agronomist and it varies depending on the weather. That's exactly right. You know, if you get great weather for recovery, if something does happen, if you get great weather for recovery, you may recover in a day or two, no big deal. But if you've got some tough weather out there and then you spray one of those three-way, four-way, five-way mixes, your plant's already stressed and then you throw another stress on top of it, you're gonna have a disaster where next year you may have perfect weather conditions, you may not see any kind of yellow flash okay, or crop response at all. Let's talk about this weather thing just a little bit. When you have a cool wet spring, you go out and spray some harsh herbicide or maybe even a harsh herbicide together with a fungicide, you get a lot of leaf burn coming out of a situation like that. Whereas if you did the exact same thing in a hot dry spring, you would see almost no yellow flash at all. Avoid doing those multiple tank mixes as much as possible. You know, maybe you mix two things together, but you know, that four and five way mix, you know, I don't know, that's kind of iffy. The other thing you may do is use some sort of product with your spray application to help your plant work through that stress a little bit To help more. it recover. Yeah, for example, uh, with a lot of Roundup applications in soybeans, we've been using MegaGrow for a few years, which is a plant growth regulator. It helps the plant recover quicker after you're spraying that Roundup. The other big thing is what you're doing for an adjuvant package. So if you want to really burn through a leaf and burn through quickly, you'll use a methylated seed oil or maybe even a crop oil that's a little step down from the MSO. Otherwise, if you don't want to burn through, you don't want uh, maybe as much yellow flash in certain weather conditions, you might go to a non-ionic surfactant. That's not going to give you as quick a response, maybe not even as good a weed kill 
but at least you won't burn the crop quite as much. So you have to be uh, flexible and ready to go either direction depending on what the weather conditions would happen to be on the day that you're spraying. And you have to know your products that you're using. For example, there are a lot yep. of soybean aphids that got sprayed this summer and guys said, well, you know what, I want to use Lorsban or I want to use Silencer or some pyrethroid product. Yeah, because I'm product. using a fungicide, I'm going to throw crop oil in with it. Oh my goodness. And, could... and you know, there, there's some differences <laughs> there. Like Lorsban, for example, has some oils in that formulation where you mix that with certain fungicides or certain adjuvant packages and all of a sudden it's really hot on the crop. Or if you're just spraying Lorsban all by itself, we don't expect to see a crop response at all. In fact, we expect to see dead insects quickly. So a lot of guys like to use Lorsban because it drops those aphids off the plants and soybeans, for example, fast. However, a lot of guys will switch to a pyrethroid because typically they're throwing it in with a fungicide or with potentially a herbicide Okay, so in summary, you can get yellow flash in any crop. It usually is a an adverse reaction to something that you ended up spraying on that crop, or it could be just adverse reaction to certain weather conditions you've got at the time. Our number one piece of advice is make sure you're talking to a good, good agronomist. Make sure you're flexible in what you're using on your crop, what you're using for products and for adjuvants, and again, when you go out there and spray, be thinking about overlaps. Try not to have overlaps in your fields, especially if you're spraying harsher herbicides or fungicides. Well, there's a lot of things to think about, especially if you have our Weed of the Week and you really want to get it out of your fields. We'll show you how important that is coming up later in the show.